welcome back to Photoshop Icebreakers. My name is CJAM and in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use Photoshop's built-in and powerful camera raw filter to take your photos from this to this. So here we are inside of Adobe Photoshop with the photo that we're going to be editing today. And the first thing I want to do before I start editing is I want to put all my edits on a smart object. Now, what a smart object will help me to do is keep the original state of my photo. Now, to do that, I'm going to just go ahead and duplicate this image over here in my layers. I'm just going to hit Control J, Command J if you're on Mac, and then I'm just going to right click and then click convert to smart object. That way, after I've made my edits, if I want to go back in and make any changes, I can do that without worrying, right? So you can edit any photo whatsoever using Adobe Photoshop. Now let's continue. So to use the camera raw filter, you want to go up here to filter and then camera filter, or you can hit the shortcut as you see here, shift, control, and A, and that will open the filter. What I want to do next is just go ahead and make this window full screen. And now we have all the space that we need. First things first, over here on your right hand side is where you have all of your controls, all of your sliders, where you can make the magic happen. And where I like to start is I like to start under this light tab here. And if you were to look below that, you'll see we have tabs for color, effects, curves, color mixer, detail, etc., etc. All right, now what I want to do first is I want to go ahead and add some contrast. I'm just moving the slider to about the 40s. Mid 40s is good, but the creativity you express here in your edits and adjusting your sliders is completely up to you. So next, I want to turn down some of the highlights here. Let's bring it over into the negative, or maybe I can go all the way to minus 100. That works as well. Let's punch the blacks a little bit, right? like so you'll see that's giving me the dark areas all around the image here everything in the image that's dark that's black is going to be affected if i were to double click it will get zeroed out and it will go back to the default value let me come back somewhere here and come down to color and this is where i can hit my temperature you know how cool or how warm my image is my tint as well as vibrance and saturation so Let's say this image is a little bit too blue for me. It's a little bit too cool. If I wanted to warm it up, I can just make subtle adjustments over to the yellow side of the slider here and you see what's happening. That's a little bit too extreme. That's not what we want today at least. So let me just go ahead to like eight. That works for me, right? Keep the saturation as is, but just to show you what it does, it just intensifies the colors in the image, right? But what I want to do today is I want to come down to my color mixer and adjust each color separately, individually, right? Because I have more control that way. No, first things first, when you look at this image, you see the blue sky, you see this aqua or teal outfit or green, if you will. So you'll notice that we have green sliders, aqua and blue sliders here, and we can just slide each of them to see what changes it creates in our image. Now, if I were to go ahead and hit green, let's bring it all the way over to minus 100 you'll see not much happened, right? And if I were to touch the aquas, you can see that something is starting to happen there, right? If I were to go, let's say 50 in the 50s, and if I were to come down to the blues, you'll notice that we have a lot more going on here, right? This is where we would be if I were to bring out all the blues, like take them completely out. And if I were to pump them all the way up, this is where we would be, right? But that's not exactly what I want. What I want is just like some minor, removal of the blues let's say minus 30 that works for me and then i'm just going to push the aquas all the way up some more right if you look right here in her hair <laughs> in her hair notice that you see some oranges or yellows or reds even in her skin tone so we have to be careful of what we adjust here but again if that's the look you're going for go for it now if i were to touch the oranges right if i were to bring them all the way over to negatives you'll see it affected her hair and her face right now if i were to double click and bring it back to zero if i wanted to do reds you'll see that it's having not as much of a crazy effect if I were to do the reds versus the oranges, right? Let me just zoom back out by going fit in view. And I zoomed in earlier simply by just clicking on the image and then I adjusted the zoom by holding Alt option if you're on Mac and just rolling my mouse wheel, right? And let me show you the before and after. 
this is where we started this is where we are right now right let's come down to color gradients just add some slight colors into this image all i'm just going to be doing is just shifting the shadows to the blue side just a little bit i don't want to get too crazy with it and let's do the mid-tones over to the red or orange just a little bit right let me show you the before and after right you can use q on your keyboard as well to just cycle through these looks right here this is our before over here this is our after if you were to go ahead and hit effects you can add clarity if you want to really get the image punching right let's do plus seven i can also add some vignette you know to give it that wide angle lens look right I'm gonna go back to color here and just adjust the temperature a little bit to just take off some of the warmth about five is good and what i'm going to be doing now to save all that i've been doing so far is just clicking o Okay, and as you can see, this is where we ended up. And what I mentioned earlier about smart objects, you'll see here I have the image, right? And if you were to look below my image layer here, you see it says smart filters, smart object. And below that, it says the camera raw filter because that's what we used. Now, if I were to go ahead and turn this off, like turn off my smart filters, you'll see I'm back to where we started. Turn it back on, all my changes came back just like that and if i wanted to go in and change something that i didn't like all i have to do is just double click on camera raw filter here and it will bring back up our camera raw filter menu and as you can see all the changes that we made are still here hit cancel to exit and now one final thing i want to do to really breathe life into this image go to edit and then come all the way down to sky replacement and you know photoshop will detect the sky for you and then it will give you the sky options that you have right if you want to change the particular sky that you get by default click this arrow i can adjust the brightness here if i wanted to like so right this is looking real good let me just warm up the sky a little more like so because remember while we were editing the photo here we added some warmth right now let's output it to new layers so we can turn them on and off if we want click ok and it will create some new layers for me if you were to look over here in your layers you'll see your sky replacement group and if you were to turn this off you'll see you have your sky there so here's our before and here's our after remember if you like this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe to photoshop's youtube channel for more awesome creative tutorials like this one thank you thank you so much for watching my name is cjam and i'll see you guys in the next video